So the, uh, the, the second issue I wanted to throw on the table here uh, for the, you know, for today, which can't, here we go, okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the thing that I wanted to throw on the table here for today is this uh, question of what happens if Donald Trump gets indicted. And uh, during the break, somebody, somebody noted that uh, Malcolm Nance has been talking about how he's writing a new book on um, you know, on the right and the rise of the, the fascist right, essentially. Malcolm's a good guy, and he's a, good, he's a brilliant investigator um, and, and understands these issues. But I, I, you know, be, between multiple pieces of his life, his experience, including his work as an intelligence officer. And this caller, this, this person who caught in contact with the pro said, program, said that Malcolm, had, Malcolm Nance had said, um, I'm guessing this was on TV or maybe on Stephanie Miller's show. He's a regular on her show. Um, that if Trump is indicted, the maggots are going to go nuts. All hell is going to break loose. They're going to be in the streets. You know, you're going to see something that looks like an insurgency. You know, God only knows, but get ready, right? If, if Trump gets indicted, you know, just get ready because here come the maggots. And... I think that that's a possibility. I think, on the other hand, there's a very real possibility that if Trump gets indicted, and it looks like we may be within weeks of this. And keep in mind, down in Florida, you've got Broward County, where Trump lives, I believe, where, where Mar-a-Lago is located. Um, their town council is having meetings about what to do if Trump is being extradited. And Ron DeSantis, the governor, has had meetings about whether or not he has the ability to refuse an extradition request from New York State, if if it's uh, or New York City, whether it's uh, Letitia James, the Attorney General for New York State, or whether it's Cyrus Vance, the uh, District Attorney for the City of Manhattan, and now you've got other jurisdictions as well. I mean, there's there's federal crimes uh, that uh, Trump has apparently committed that are being looked into, or that he might have committed as well as uh, crimes that occurred within the District of Columbia. So you've got four, uh, to the best of my knowledge, four different essentially uh, prosecutorial agencies looking into, his, in, into him. And that, and that doesn't include, you know, the possibility of congressional investigations. That doesn't include the FBI and the Justice Department reevaluating their non-decision, which is what I'm going to get into later in the program. Um, uh, you know, why Merrick Garland appears to be covering up for Bill Barr, their non-decision about prosecuting Donald Trump for trying for uh, 10 instances of obstruction of justice where he was trying to cover up the fact that he was coordinating with Russia, or at least his campaign was coordinating with Russia to determine which states the millions of dollars of Facebook posts should be inserted into to try to discourage Hillary Clinton voters from voting. And it was uh, an effort that was successful, by the way. I mean, I, 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 I don't know why more people in the media are not just coming out and saying this, but if Paul Manafort, who used to work for Russian oligarchs and, and Russian-associated oligarchs, if Paul Manafort had not been handing this polling information off to Russian intelligence and, and they had not been helping coordinate a campaign through the Internet Research Bureau or, or whatever it's called there, um, you know, whether it's the government or whether it's oligarchs, I'm not sure, you know, it matters much, don't know, but um, to, to insert these, you know, to identify, using, using Zuckerberg's fantastic technology, they could identify, okay, we want black people in Wisconsin or we want white middle class voters in Wisconsin who have both voted for Republicans and Democrats in their, in their past. And, and sending them ads and they in one of these ads they did like over 5000 different versions of it and tested them all in one day and we have not one example of any of them all this was below the radar sending these ads to largely to black people in those five states in Wisconsin Michigan Pennsylvania Ohio and uh, whatever the fifth one was and 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 saying you know with the Hillary Clinton super predator clip which really hurt her in the black community and so those folks just didn't bother to show up and vote. As Mark Pocan has pointed out on this show, I think there was 200,000 fewer Democratic voters in 2020 than what there were in 2016. And, or excuse me, in 2016 rather than there were in 2012 for the re-election of Obama. And 
That was that community by and large. And it was because they were the target of a, a Russian disinformation campaign. And probably ones from, you know, coming out of North Korea, Saudi Arabia. Uh, the one country we're pretty sure actually didn't interfere in this election was China, of all things. But in any case, or in the 2016 or the 2020 elections, I, I think they just didn't want the blowback. They're just too busy making money. But the question, if Trump gets indicted, is this going to help him or hurt him? I think you could build a really good case that if the, in the indictment is really strong, and if it's something that every American can understand, and if they come out and say in plain language what it is, that it'll hurt him badly. On the other hand, if you get some prosecutor out there using legalese and talking about weird technical things like, you know, mispricing, mispriced al asset allocations, then I guarantee you the maggots will be out.